Thank you, Jesus. And uh, I really do believe, I do want to get into this. I, I could have a testimonial service all morning, but I do really believe that God, this morning as I was praying, I really feel the Lord has a word for you, for, for Victor Outreach Fremont. And I believe that this word, is connect, it, it'll minister to you personally because God got to give you personal victory so that he can give birth to corporate victory. There's a whole level that God wants to take Victor Outreach Fremont to. But your victory is connected to that victory. And if you're, if you're struggling in your personal life, then it's hard to move forward on a corporate life. But when this one's got victory, and this one's got victory, and this one's got victory, how many know we serve a victorious God? We serve a victorious God. The Bible says that he rose on the third day. We serve a Jesus that gives victory, and I believe God wants to speak to your life this morning. And my prayer is that at the end of this message, you would come to the altar or right there in your seat, wherever you feel comfortable, and God will give you a breakthrough to release you into the new levels that he has for your life. Amen? So if you can stand with me one more time just for the reading of God's word, I also want to thank the United We Can family. We would not be able to be doing what we're doing in different parts of the world if it was not for United We Can. We've been in the country of South Africa 12 years. We have seven churches that we've planted, and these churches are growing and going forward. I told the first service, and I'll tell you, we're housing over 300 drug addicts at one time completely for free. Come on, somebody. Completely for free, but we all know that it's not free. Hallelujah. The water is free, but the pipes is where you have to pay for, my God. And uh, it wasn't for the United We Camp family. We would not be able to be doing what we're doing in South Africa. So thank you for partnering with Pastor Sonny. And thank you for partnering with us in the beautiful vision, not only for our cities, but for the inner cities of the world. Amen. Joshua chapter 1, verse 1. If you got your Bible, you can open it up and, and get to that. And if not, just lock in with me and I'll read it for you. The title of my message is Transitioning from One Level to the Next. Transitioning from one level to the next. How many want to go to a new level in their walk with God? Joshua chapter 1 verse 1, the Bible says, After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' aid, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now then, you and all these people get ready to cross the Jordan. Somebody say cross over. Verse 3 says, I will give you every place where you set your foot. Somebody say Amen. As I promised Moses, verse 4 says, your territory will extend from the desert to Lebanon and from the great river, the Euphrates, all the Hittite country to the great sea on the west. Verse 5 says, no one will be able to stand up against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and courageous because you will lead these people. God was speaking to Joshua's future. You will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their forefathers to give them. One more time, he says, be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the laws that I gave to Moses. Then you'll be successful and prosperous. I'm just jumping through it to get to this portion of scripture. Verse, uh, the end of verse 9 says, be strong and courageous. That's the third time that the Lord had to tell Joshua in this conversation to be strong and courageous. Then he says, do not be terrified. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Father, one more time, reveal things to us that release us into the next level. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. You could go ahead and be seated. Now, here in this portion of scripture, I'm going to get right into it. So lock in with me. Sometimes I talk fast. They used to call me Chucky. I'll be right back, Lopez. <laughs> Come on, somebody, because I was always going to be right back. Hallelujah. Get their money. They're waiting. I'll be right back and never come back. Come on, somebody. Fast talking. Hallelujah. So sometimes I talk a little fast. So lock in with me so that you don't get left in, in verse 1. Hallelujah. Here in this portion of Scripture, as we look, we know that this is a time where the children of Israel were getting ready to transition from one level to the next. They were getting ready in a time of their journey with God and their journey of coming out of Egypt and wandering in the wilderness. But now was a new season where they were getting ready to leave some things behind and move into the future that God had for their lives. And how many know serving the Lord is progressive? 
that we may come in in one condition, but God does not leave us in that condition. That little by little, he starts working on us, and pretty soon our life begins to change, and we go from one level to the next. God loves you just the way you are, but he loves you too much to leave you like that. When you come to the Lord, come as you are, but it doesn't say stay as you are. Come as you are and let the Lord begin to work on us, taking us from one level to the next. And we see that taking place with the children of Israel. Moses showed up to Egypt and God delivered the children of Israel. Then they wandered through a season of being in the wilderness. And then you see them come to this point right here where they're getting ready to not just be delivered from Egypt, not just wandering in the wilderness, but now was a time and a season where God was going to take them into a promised land. How many want to get into the promises that God has for their lives? And this time was a people where, where the people of God had to come to a place where they were going to leave something behind and move into the new season that God had for them. See, this transition and Joshua was going to be the man that God was going to use to lead these people in this transition. And so here's God speaking to Joshua for nine verses, and he tells Joshua to get up, to position himself in front of the people, and to lead them into the future. But you see that when this opportunity came to Joshua, instead of Joshua confidently stepping in to the future that God had for him, he began to be consumed with fears and anxieties. And how many know sometimes fears and anxieties have the potential to rob us of the next level that God has for our lives? And so here was Joshua on, on having mixed emotions. He was excited about the new opportunity, but at the same time, he had his doubts and his insecurities. Am I strong enough? Am I smart enough? Am I good enough to take these people into the future that God had promised for their lives? So before Joshua could lead the people, God had to have a conversation with them so that he could lead himself. I'm going to let you chew on that a little bit. See, God has promises for us, but before you can experience them on the outside, you got to get some breakthroughs on the inside. Because sometimes our doubts and our fears and our insecurities keep us back. So these nine verses is God getting personal with Joshua. How many thank God that he'll get personal with you? That God will begin to minister to you, to speak to you. And through this, Joshua was saying, he was, he, you could tell, he said, because God had to tell him three different times, be strong and courageous. So obviously, Joshua was doubting. Can I do it? Am I good enough? And God was telling him, everywhere you put your foot, I'm going to give that territory. Uh, the same way I was with Moses, I'm going to be with you. Only be strong and courageous. I'm going to give you this. I'll never leave you nor forsake you. So every excuse that Joshua had, God had an encouragement for him. And this morning, I want to let you know, if you feel a little insecure, you feel a little afraid, the same way God was with Joshua, God is with you. And the same way God led Joshua into to his future, God will be with us. How many believe that we serve a God that's on our side? If you believe that God be before you, then who can be against you? No weapon formed against us shall prosper. If you believe that you got a God on your side, I want you to put those hands together a little bit. If you believe that you serve a God that will never leave you nor forsake you, God is on our side. He's our protector. He's our provider. So therefore, everywhere we go, God will take care of us. Has he taken care of you? Has he been with you? When people walked away, God never walked away. When people talked about you, God was with you. When you were in your deepest and darkest moment, God never left you there. And if he was with you then, he'll be with you right now. So by faith, by faith, by faith, by faith, by faith, by faith, you need to get up, step up, and move into the future that God has for your life. Go ahead and clap a little bit if God is speaking to you already. He was speaking to Joshua in the midst of his emotional roller coaster. He was up and down, excited about the opportunities, but doubting himself. Doubting himself. So for nine verses, 
God gets personal with Joshua. And in this conversation, God three times tells Joshua, be strong and courageous. See, before God could put Joshua before the people to lead them, he had to give Joshua a breakthrough in his own heart so he can lead himself. So before Joshua ever stood before the people, nine verses, I believe that was a heavy conversation. You ever have one of those conversations with God? Some of you don't have those conversations. That's why you miss out. Pow! Ooh. Oh. Home director shot. Hallelujah. Some of you get so emotional. But you never learn to bring those emotions. We all have emotions. We all feel afraid. Come on, somebody. I was in the largest Muslim country in the world. And I thought I was going to be the next YouTube video. Come on, somebody. I didn't know if I was going to make it out of that country. So definitely there was times of fear and times of doubt. But I thank God I knew how to spend time with Jesus where he could break that fear and allow me to get into the future. I would have never met my wife. I probably would have never had my children. I probably would have left that country, came back to America, and probably backslid and smoked a pipe. But because I learned how to pray, I learned how to spend time with God, I was able to break those spirits over my life. And I believe the same way that God has taught me that, God has taught all of us that, because that veil was torn for all of us. See, before he could experience the breakthroughs and promises coming to pass in this new season, he would first need to experience breakthrough in his own heart. And we, before we can experience the breakthroughs that God has for our lives personally and also for our ministry and for our church, we also need those personal breakthroughs that free our heart and free our mind to be able to move. The Bible says that our heart condemns us. Sometimes our own hearts. You could never change. You could never do that. How many know the devil's a liar? In South Africa, we say the devil's a leonar. He's a leonar, me bro. He's a liar. In Indonesia, we say he's a bohong. In Tagalog, I don't know what he says. Hallelujah. Mente rosa. It's a straight mente rosa. Hallelujah. The devil, no matter what language you speak, the Bible says he is the father of all lies. And some of you came in and the devil's been lying to you. But I got good news. You're a lot better than you think you are. You're a lot stronger than you think. Uh, Come on, somebody. I'm not just trying to inspire you. I'm trying to remind you that you're a better person than you think you are. Don't you let that devil keep you in a corner. It's time to break that spirit. And move into the future that God has for your life. God was having this conversation with Joshua. And I believe God revealed three things to Joshua that helped him get this victory over himself. So he could step into the new season that God had prepared for him. The first thing that I believe God had to reveal to Joshua is that God had prepared him for this season. This wasn't something that just fell on his lap. But God had preparing Joshua his entire life. For this new season. Joshua 1.1 says after the death of Moses. The servant of the Lord. The Lord said to Joshua. Moses' aid. In other words before Joshua ever got promoted. To lead the people. He was Moses' servant. He was Moses' aid. And in him leading or following. Or being a part of Moses' journey. He was had the privilege of being exposed to certain settings. He got, he got exposed to certain times in Moses' journey. And so God tells him, the same way I was with Moses. In other words, Joshua seen God with Moses. So he, if he was never with Moses, he would have never known how God was with Moses. He says, the same way I was with Moses, you've seen it with your own eyes. You were exposed to certain things as you were following Moses. You fought the Amalekites, Joshua. And you got victory. You've seen that every time Moses' hands lift up, you got the victory in that battle. Then when, when Moses went to the mountain, it was you that was with him there on the mountain. It was you who went in the beginning with the first, with the first uh, generation to go and spy out the land. You've been around. So don't let the devil lie to you. You're more ready for this season than you think you are. You've learned some stuff in life. And here we are this morning. I want to remind you 
that you've learned some stuff. Life has been life to all of us. Some of us have had some good experiences, but all of us have had some bad experiences. But I'm here to remind you that every experience you ever had has taught you something. You've learned something. And here you are today a little bit smarter, a little bit wiser, a little bit stronger. Even from the mistakes that we made. How many have learned their lessons from mistakes? How many have ever been in a dark time? And I was sitting in that front seat and I want to let some of you know you're a lot deeper than you used to be. You went through some dark season that forced you to get a little deeper. So that because you're deeper, you're a little more stable. You're, you can handle a little bit more. So I came here this morning to let you know, Victory Outreach Fremont, don't you let that devil lie to you. You're a lot better than you think you are. I'm here to let you know that you are more ready now than you've ever been. Oh, you don't believe it. I said, you're more ready now than you've ever been. You're a lot stronger now. Your marriage is better. Your mind is better. Your children are better. You've learned some stuff. So therefore, you're more ready to move in to the level that God... How many have learned some stuff through life? In the Lord and before the Lord. Come on, somebody. I learned not to run around with Anthony in the world. No, I'm playing. Hallelujah. He used to tell me I was a bust. He said, you're a bust, dude. Every time we're together, you're a bust. One time he wanted to do a beer run, and he made me stay in the van. He goes, you stay here. We're going to get busted. And I said, I ain't staying here. I'm going with you. So he went in way before me, took off way before I can get out. But I still got a, I still got a 12 pack. Yeah. Come on, somebody. We were bad. Hallelujah. We learned some stuff. You learned some stuff. We've all been through life. We've all been disappointed. We've all been lied to. We've all went through discouraging times. We've all had to learn to shake things off. We've all had to learn to get better. And because of everything we have been through, we're a better person today. We're a little wiser. Come on, somebody. I never would have made it. Remember that song? I don't even know the song. Hallelujah. I never would have made it. If you were without you, I'm wiser. I'm stronger. If you're a little wiser here this morning, if you're a little stronger here this morning, I need you to clap a little bit because God wants you to know that you're more ready for the new season that he has for your life than you think you are. You're more ready. See, the natural response of a human heart or human nature when given new opportunities or promotion is usually fear and insecurity. When a person experiences a promotion at work, a new business opportunity, a young couple has their first baby, you're going to a new grade in school, you're going from, from junior high to high school or from high school to university, whatever it may be, you're going into a new time, a new setting, a new place. There's new leadership responsibilities in the ministry, graduating the home and coming into the church. Graduating the UTC and coming into the church or going from the church into the UTC. Whatever it is, when you're transitioning from one place to another, you're similar to Joshua. You're excited about the new opportunities, but you also feel, can I do it? The pressures of a promotion usually bring out the fears and the insecurities of a person's life. Now if it doesn't. You say oh it's about time. About time they recognize. That I'm the man. Come on somebody. Then you might not be ready for this next level. Because pride comes before fall. Right? Pride is like bad breath. Everybody else knows you have it. Except you. Come on somebody. Hey, someone giving you a mint, she said, oh, he's looking out for me. <laughs> he's like, nah, nah, brother, you need a mint. Come on, somebody. He wants to be my armor bearer. He's like, nah, he can't stand standing next to you. Come on. Me. <laughs> if you feel sometimes that you're more ready, then you're in a dangerous place. Because it's our deep dependency upon God that helps us to experience the new levels that God has for our life. 
the normal response is, am I smart enough? Am I good enough? Will they see through me and realize who I really am? Will I fail? Joshua's immediate response to this new opportunity in life was fear and insecurity. So God needed to remind him that you were Moses' aid. The Living Translation says you were Moses' servant. What God was telling Joshua is that as Moses' aid, you have been in settings and have been trained to be able to be prepared for this new level that I'm giving to you. This level didn't just fall on your lap. I'm not giving you something that I haven't prepared you for. Whether you've seen me there or you didn't see me there, I've been working on you your entire journey. Ten years ago, it was me working on you. Twenty years ago, it was me working on you. Five years ago, it was me working on you. I've been working on you your entire journey, and I want to let you know you're more ready now than you've ever been. Come on and clap a little bit if you know that God has been busy with you. Yes, you may feel a little fearful and even doubtful, but the fear and the doubt cannot deny the fact that the things that you have been through in the past have prepared you for the season that is about to come. So with a fresh confidence and a fresh courage in your heart, take the step necessary and get into the future that God has for your life. How many want to take steps of faith into the future? The second thing that I believe God had to reveal to Joshua is that not only had he prepared him, but secondly, that he would be with him. So I prepared you in your past, but I'm going to be with you in your present. He says in Joshua 1.3, I will give you every place where you set your foot. As I promised Moses, your territory will extend. I'm going to jump through this stuff so we can get to it. Verse 5 says, no one will be able to stand up against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. So God was showing him, not only have I prepared you, but I'm going to be with you. Oh, my God. How many of that's good news? How many of you feel good when you got like, you know, my big brother's here to this morning. When we were younger and he was with me, man, I was like, what? What'd you say? <laughs> because I knew my big brother was going to take care of business. How many know when you know you got somebody on your side? When you got somebody that's going to back you up. When you're by yourself, you're kind of like, whoa. I remember hiding from bushes. Come on, somebody. Wasn't even really people. I was so high. Like, oh, God. <laughs> Every car was someone going to kill me. Come on, man. Hey, but when I had a couple homies, I'll, I'll call those bushes out. Like, what? What you want? <laughs> I'm ready to sling them with those bushes. Come on. What's up, homie? You, you got a problem here? Oh, it's only bushes. Come on. Like... <laughs> when you got somebody on your side that's stronger than you are, that, that's a protector, I'm here to let you know, Victory Outreach Fremont, we got somebody that's on our side. The King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the creator of heaven and earth, the big God. I'm talking about God Almighty, the one who rose on the third day and took the keys of death from the devil. I'm here to let you know the one who spoke and the world was created is the God that is on your side. He will be with you. He will protect you. So therefore, not only have I prepared you, but I'm going to be with you. I'm going to be with you. I have prepared you through your past, but I will also be with you in your present. So be strong and courageous. See, Joshua's courage and confidence would be a key attribute to his ability to take this step into the future that God promised him. He would need confidence and courage. See, Joshua's courage would be the byproduct of this combination. God prepared him in his past, and God would be with him in the present. See, when God is with us, we get a confidence by knowing that I know what I'm doing. How many of it feels good to know what you're doing? And you step into a season, you, oh, okay, I've been here before. I've done this before. I've experienced this before. But God was telling Joshua, there will be things in the new season that you know what to do, so you're going to have confidence, but your courage 
is knowing that I'm with you, that yes, there'll be things that you do know what to do, but then there's going to be some things that you don't know what to do. <laughs> See, although God has prepared us, we can never take faith out of the picture. Because without faith, it's impossible to please God. So God was telling him, I prepared you for this season. But not only have I prepared you, but I'm going to be with you. So this is the courage that Joshua had. He says, go ahead and put your foot in the Jordan and I'll stop the water. You march around the walls. You know, he must have felt funny marching around them walls. I've seen some people march around a motel room. Come on, somebody. <laughs> and God told Joshua, march around the walls. Here's an army, Jericho, fortified city, intimidating situation. And Joshua was told, this is how you're going to win the war. March around the walls. Didn't make no sense. What God was telling him to do didn't make no sense. So Joshua had certain things that he knew what to do, the circumcision and all that type of stuff, but there were certain things that he had to trust God. In other words, God was telling Joshua, you do what you can, and I'll do what you can't. You do the natural, and I'll do the supernatural. Come on, somebody. How many know sometimes you just got to step out? And trust that God is going to be with you. I believe Victory Outreach Fremont, there's a step of faith that's coming your way. And you're going to step into a new season with a new building and a new, and, and you're not going to know exactly what to do. But you do what he said to do. And you trust him to knock those walls down. You trust him to provide. You trust him to come through. Is there a church that's here that feels in their heart that God is taking you somewhere? God is taking you to new levels. For the future that he has for your life. Sometimes you won't know what to do. But rest assured, God is with you. Confidence comes from knowing that God has prepared me. Courage comes from knowing that God is with me. You put your foot in the Jordan, I'll stop the water. You march around the walls, I'll knock them down. You do what I tell you. You do what you, do what you can. And trust me to do what you can't. You do what you can and trust me to do what you can't. I remember being out there, I remember even as raising kids. I was raising kids and I was like, man, how am I gonna raise these little kids? They were crying, I was like, wow. I didn't have that model in my life. I didn't know how to raise kids and even with school, bro, I don't know how to do this thing. I never went to school, come on somebody. <laughs> Disciplining them, no one ever disciplined me. There are things not only in ministry, but in life that I can only do what I can and trust God to do what I can't. And what I can do is love those kids. I could love those kids unconditionally. I could love those kids. And when God begins to show me, hey, watch out for this. You know, Gabriel, my God, Gabriel is like, he's smooth. I say, hey, hey, as soon as I say I miss you, he says, did you buy those shoes? He's always trying to hustle me. He's like me. Come on, somebody. He gets, hi, Dad. Hi, Dad. As soon as he finds me in a soft place, oh, he goes for the kill. He's trying to work it. So I don't know how. But I just got to do what I can and trust God to do what I can't. All I know is I'm not nodding out on the couch while he's watching TV. All I, all I know is he's not walking around the house with roaches in the, in the with, with, you know, little, little cabbies. Come on, somebody. In, in, the, in the ashtray. He's not, he's not walking around with his parties all night. He's in a new setting. He's in a new place. So I'm going to do what I can, and I'm going to trust God to do what I can. My children are going to go to college. My, my children are going to go to university. They're going to do things that I never did before because I'm going to do what I I can and I'm gonna trust God to do what I can we got a God I said we got a God that is on our side I need you to clap a little bit if you know that you know that you know that God is with us so not just in ministry but also in your house your business opportunities there's also businessmen that are here that God's opening up opportunities for you you're not gonna know what to do you do what you can. 
and trust God to do what you can. You put your foot in the Jordan and God will stop the water. You do what's revealed and he'll do the rest. God only holds us accountable to do what he showed us. He doesn't hold us accountable to do the things that he didn't show us. Because there are some things that you don't know what to do. But how many know he's not only prepared us, but he's with us. My last point. Somebody say, close quick, brother. It's getting hungry. We got to get the hay word. Hallelujah. We got a busy day. It's not only did God prepare him. Secondly, not only was God with him. But thirdly, God instructed Joshua. In Joshua's 1.7, he says, be strong and courageous. And be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, that you may be successful wherever you go. Do not let this book of the law depart from your mouth. Meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. So here's the children of Israel. The musicians can make their way. If you don't get up here, I'll never shut up. Hallelujah. Here's the children of Israel, and they're getting ready to move into a new level, a new season. Now, they, when they got delivered from Egypt, they, it was only supposed to take them 13 days to get from Egypt to the promised land. Hold on one second. Just be up here. Just your presence keeps me in check. Hallelujah. <laughs> don't, pray, don't play yet, because then we get all like, wow. <laughs> I'm not ready for wow yet. Come on, somebody. <laughs> they had, instead of 13 days, it took them 40 years. So there were certain behaviors, certain ways that they did things. Although they weren't in Egypt, you can get someone out of Egypt, but God had to get Egypt out of them. <laughs> we could get you out of the hood, well, we got to get the hood out of you. Hey, hey, hey. I seen licensed ministers still in the hood. Come on, somebody. Pastors like, whoa, whoa. I go to L.A., they got a blue, blue paño. Like, brother, are we saved? Are we not saved or what? You still got those pins? Because I shared the testimony when I went to La Puente, I had the pins. This was 20 years ago. I got homeboys. I went up to one of the churches. He came up to me. He said, oh, you still got those pins? And I was like, pastor? <laughs> Brother, we can get you out of the hood. But can we get the hood out of you? The children of Israel wandered for 40 years. Not because God didn't deliver them. But they didn't have the internal breakthroughs that they needed. So they went 40 years of undoing things. The Bible says a whole generation died. In other words, things had to die. How many of you got to kill some things? When I was in the home, right, Walt? When I was in the home, they used to say, dead man walking. Pasquale used to say, uh, uh, dead people don't talk. We would start arguing, like, hey, why do we got to wash the van? Hey, dead people don't talk. Just breathe and obey, right? Right? I mean, you got to die to that old man. And so God was telling Joshua here, there are some things that you have to leave on this side. Some ways that you can't take into this new season with you. There are some things that have to be buried. But then he tells him, but there are some things that you got to take with you. The things that you heard from Moses. The things that Moses taught you, not the things that Pharaoh taught you, not the things that Egypt taught you, but the things that Moses taught you. How many know you've been learning some stuff in the house of God? How many have been learning some stuff on, on Sunday nights and the, what do you call it? The overflow. Come on, somebody. You've been coming on Sunday nights. You've been getting some tools. You've been getting equipped. There are some things that you don't let go of. Even you guys that come out of the homes. There are some things you can't let go of. I got to close this thing, huh? My God. I'm done right now. 
what I learned in the home, Pastor Ant, was prayer. I learned how to pray. I never went to Bible school. Remember, they send me so fast. Get out of here. Run. Never went to Bible school. They put me on a plane, put me in the Philippines. So I didn't have no Bible. I was like just praying. But it was that basic. When the devil tried to take me out in the Philippines, I knew how to pray. When the devil tried to take me out in Indonesia, I knew how to pray. There are some things I have to protect and keep with me if I'm going to be able to live in the new level. See, some of us want to do prayer in the home or do prayer for a season, but then we don't pray no more and we're frustrated and discouraged and wonder why we're not making it. I'm here to let you know that if you stop praying, you're going to stop staying. But if you learn how to pray, you're going to stay. If you learn how to fast, you're going to last. How many know that it's not what we can do, but it's what he can do? And if we continue to stay connected to God, our life would change. How many want to make it through the long haul. I said, how many want to be around in 20 years from now? Still going forward for God. You can stand. There are some things that you have to leave. That complaining spirit, you leave that in the wilderness. That gossiping spirit, you leave that in the wilderness. That doubting the promises of God, you leave that in the wilderness. That Egypt mentality, you leave that in the wilderness. But that prayer life, that discipleship life, that coming into the new level, that tie, that offering, that 90-day challenge, whatever it is that has helped you prosper, you take that with you, and you will be successful, and you will prosper. Lift up those hands all over this place. Lift up that worship all over this place. Sing a song. Hallelujah. Come on, worship it. It's your day in our name. 